we did a preview of it when I bought it last year, and I've uh, over the last little while I've had some opportunity to shoot some film, and um, so this is this is where I stand with it. Um, so just running through the camera itself, you know, for the size, it's an incredibly capable, um, you know, it's, it's not a large format camera, it's a field camera, but it uh, it does, you know, very well. It's got, you know, it's got, actually it's got pretty much everything you need for, for a field camera. It's got rise and fall. It has, uh, you know, swing and tilt. Let's see here, what can I, there we go. I can swing and like that. And there's, there's uh, rises, I think. There we go. Dun, dun, dun. You can drop the front bed and end up with uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of drop if you need to. And um, what else about it? It has a rangefinder uh, with uh, cammed lenses, so you can actually any of the eight lenses they made for this camera you can you can use uh, with rangefinder, which is really nice. And uh, the lenses themselves, they're you know they're actually they're quite they're quite compact. Um, apparently, the ones that are labeled super. Um, both this one and that one, 65, 90. Apparently, will cover 4x5, which came as a surprise to me because it's um, they're they're really they're pretty pretty dainty. Um, so yeah, so what do I like about it? Well, um, it's nice and small. And what do I dislike about it? It's um, it's nice and small. It uh, it's hard to you know sometimes it's just I mean my hands aren't that big, but sometimes it's just kind of hard to get into all the little nooks and crannies that have it because everything is really quite compact and quite. Um, you know, just quite sort of minimal. It's also sort of hard with a loop on the ground glass, just because the ground glass is not very big. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it, it tends to be, it's just, you know, it just takes a bit of getting used to it really more than anything. And what I do like is I do like the lenses. Surprisingly sharp, fairly low contrast. They have kind of a vintage -y sort of a feel, especially if you shoot it with some black and white film. They're a bit slow, 5.6 F7 you know, makes the ground glass a little dim, which can be a pain, but then of course it also makes the lenses nice and small, which can be a benefit. And obviously they were going for portability when they designed these lenses. And like every camera, you know, once you once you actually shoot with it for a while, it, it becomes easier. And you know, the first time I took this camera out, it was a real challenge. I basically had to do everything. You know, I dropped things and things were loose and things were too tight and trying to get the lenses to work and trying to find the ground glass to figure out where your framing was. There is a viewfinder so you can sort of roughly approximate your framing. And these kind of cameras do take a fair amount of getting used to. It's hard to pick this up and just run with it. And it's a challenge to be able to, um, to shoot with, but then of course the harder you work at it, the you know the better your images you know are. And, and you know one of the reasons why I'm saying that, hopefully, is that I've just bought myself an eight x ten, and I'm hoping that the learning curve on the eight x ten is uh, not unlike the learning curve on this. The other thing that's a bit of a bit of an odd bit of an odd situation is that the 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 lenses have a little bushing that you have to screw your your cable release into. And these things are made out of unobtainium. I mean, they, you cannot buy them. I only have one for the two lenses. And God forbid you'd lose that uh, because then your cable release doesn't work with your lens. I mean, some people will wrap the cable release with a bit of tape, so at least it'll fit in there. But it's, it's a, bit of a bit of a clutch, and, and that is just kind of worrisome. I'm not exactly sure why they did it. I guess they didn't want to have the lenses damaged if the threads got crossed or something like that, but it's a bit worrisome. The other thing about these lenses that's kind of weird is the throw on the shutter release is actually quite long. What that means is that, is that of all of, the, all of the cable releases that I own, this old kind of warped and bent one is the only one that has a long enough throw to trip the shutters. All the other cable releases I own don't work. It's a bit disappointing um, to only have one and have one that's kind of mangled. You know, and the other thing as well about, about this camera is that because you've got roll film backs on it, you can get eight, eight exposures per roll, um, which, is, which is nice to have. And, um, but on the other hand, for me, the major drawback is that the roll film backs that I have for this camera are six by nine. And I'm not a fan of the six by nine format or the two to three ratio of 35 millimeter film or 35 millimeter, uh, you know, DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, all of that 24 by 36. I, I just don't, I just don't care for it. It's just not, not something I like. So that's kind of problematic because if I'm going to make as much of an effort to shoot with this camera as I do, it becomes hard because I don't really like just the format of the photos. The photos themselves are beautiful, but composing in six by nine and shooting in six by nine is not just not something that I enjoy doing. And, and I, I, I could go on eBay and I could buy a couple of six by seven or even I think they make six by eight backs as well, which, which, would, be, which would be you know a solution. But then they're a couple hundred bucks each and do I really want to spend $500 on more equipment for this camera when I could just shoot with my four by five? The question is, given the opportunity, would I reach for this camera over any other camera that I own? And the answer is I'm not sure. And that's sort of where I ended up. Although we are going to try and put an anamorphic adapter on it to see if we can shoot some anamorphic 
shots, which would be kind of fun because that, you know, I mean, anamorphic is fun no matter what. So, so yeah, so that's, that's the 980. It's been a very interesting process. Thankfully, it's really not very expensive. My investment is limited, which is really good. So, yeah, so that's, you know, so that's what we got. So, you know, thanks for watching, and um, if you want a 980, let me know.